Before you can use images in machine learning, deep learning, you need to be able to process these images, pre-process them. We're going to look at that in this video. I've got the example notebook loaded up in Colab, and you should be able to access this from the link in the description of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and run this first part. This just establishes that we are using Colab. It should work locally outside of Colab as well. And then I am going to run this part, which basically uh, loads an image and Let's think about really what these images are before we even get them into something like a pie torch. So here we're loading a image of kind of the iconic building for Washington University, which is Brookings Hall. And we can see what the actual image that we loaded actually looks like. We can see that the image as an array is a series of RGB values. It's essentially a 3D array, which is going to be the, the width by the height by the depth which in the depth is the color. So three deep of three elements of red, green, blue. So that is where we take an image that was taken with a camera and then looking at the pixels, we're going to see that we can modify those directly, but let's go the other direction. We can also create an image completely from the pixel up. This is called rendering typically, and it's very powerful. So we're going to do this here. The width and height is going to be 64 by 64. So it's going to be a relatively small image that we're going to actually create. And what we're going to do is create the three. And what we're going to do is create four boxes. You can see the end result here, but we're going to create four boxes and that is going to then create something that looks kind of like the Windows logo. So what we're doing here is we're, go we're looping through 32 rows. 32 is half of 64, so we're, we're looping 32 down. And we're rendering this yellow part, so 32 and then 32 across. We are rendering this pixel by pixel. Ideally, you probably want to set rectangle by rectangle or, or, or larger objects. If you truly render it pixel by pixel, it'll go slower. Sometimes that's absolutely necessary. But here we are setting the individual row and column to 255, 255, 0, which is RGB for yellow. We do a similar thing for red, green, and blue. And you can see that when we run this, we then create the image from this. The encoding is red, green, and blue. There are other encodings other than RGB. Uh, HSV is, is another one that I'm quite fond of for various projects. This is RGB. This is typically what your images are stored in when they're actually saved. Sometimes they'll flip these around, like OpenCV, I believe, puts blue in the middle. We can also, and, and this, this results in an image that we've rendered from the pixel up. We can also transform images. So if we grab Brookings Hall again, what we're going to do is change it to gray, grayscale, kind of like an old black and white image, even those were behind before, before my time. What we do here is we get, we are going to load the image from the RGB value that I have here, and we're going to get the rows and columns. Always probe the image to find out what the rows and columns are. That way your code's adaptable to other images. And then we're going to print out what the rows and columns are. Not necessary, but it's kind of nice for a diagnostic standpoint. And then we're going to loop through all of the rows, all of the columns, and we are going to take the mean of each of those RGB values. So there's three RGB values. We're going to sum those together, divide it by three. That's that's the mean. It's a very primitive sort of grayscale. Ideally, a grayscale would be done as a weighted average, but this, this is just a simple, simple, simple example. And you can see we get T, which is the average value, and then we just create an entirely new RGB value where the red, green, and blue are all the same. And the closer the, the red, green, and blue are to each other in RGB encoding, the closer it is to a gray. And there we have the grayscale image. This is a very common sort of thing that you will want to do is standardizing images. You might want everything to be 512 by 512 of 24-bit color, whatever. You want to standardize. You want to make all your images the same. And you are dealing probably with tens of thousands of images sometimes in some of these training jobs. You don't want to load all those into Photoshop or GIMP or some other tool to, to do that. So here, what we're going to do, we give it a list of images. This can be as long as you want to, within reason. And might also want to pull this from a directory tree. Just use glob or some other Python on package that will do that for you. And then we have a function that is going to be ran across all of those. So we pass in the images and down here is where we're going to loop across this array and we are going to 
We'll talk about that in a second, but we're going to loop across all of those. We are going to load the images and we're going to crop them to square, which is what this crop square function does. We'll look at that in a second. Then we're going to resize them to 128 by 128. And by the way, what I mean by crop square, I should go ahead and describe this one right now. We're basically looking at the maximum of what the width or the height is. We're making it square. So we're, we're going to cut off, if it's portrait, we're going to cut off the top and bottom to make it square. If it's landscape, we're going to cut off the right side. Otherwise, we're going to have an area with no pixel data. So we get this and center it sort of in that, and then that crops it to square. So we're resizing it, we're printing the URL that we've obtained, and flattening it basically just so that we can then put it uh, into, into the image array, and we can print these all out. So we, we basically flatten them all to just a linear array, like we would probably use them for machine learning. You could also resave them. Often, I will do that as well. You might also want to add noise to an app. This can be useful when you, you're wanting to do augmented data sets. So you might train it on a distorted image. Like here, we're adding noise to Brookings Hall. We're putting random squares into it. And the way we're going about doing that is we are basically looping through all of the 100s. We're going to put 100 squares into there. We put a random seed in here just so that the squares are consistent. Honestly, the reason that I do that is so that my notebook doesn't grow too large on GitHub because I'll, I'll, I'll rerun this file likely many times and I don't want the squares all in a different location because then it'll save an entirely new image. But it finds all of these and then notice this. This is using NumPy indexing so that we can very rapidly draw these. We don't want to loop over every pixel and every single one of these squares that we're adding. So we're going from Y, which is where the Y top is, and then we uh, go forward or down the size of it, which is they're all of a consistent size. And then similarly, we do exactly the same thing with X. And we fill that with zero, which is, which is black. And there we have the image. You might want to resave it. You can use this to add additional images to your training set. And it actually makes the neural network more resilient to noise. If you're trying to say classify it, maybe classify and say that it's, it's a building or something such as that. If you want to process many images and resave them, I give you some starter code here that you might want to use. I have a data set that I created with a bunch of paper clips. This was used for a Kaggle competition where I challenged my students to count the paper clips. And they're basically automatically loaded into this directory. Or if you're going to run this locally, you'll need to modify that. That's, that's where I stored them. And this just downloads the paper clips. But the code that we're going to run, we have several options that we have here. We're going to scale them, standardize them. Standardize just means get everything into red, green, and blue. Uh, if you have grayscale images mixed in there, like say you've harvested a bunch of these from the internet, that that causes a that can cause a problem. Also, failing if images are too small, uh, some minimum resolution. And here we use blob, which is useful. It will loop across the entire directory of say JPEG files, and I'm going to process all of these various filters that I'm defined for this. And it's going to process all of those. And then ultimately we're going to save the image. So this can be a very useful technique if you need to pre-process a bunch of data and you don't want to run it each time. Thank you for watching this video. And if you found this useful, please subscribe to the channel, like the video so that you don't miss out further installments on this course.